Hi, welcome to Kausalwise channel. In this series of videos, we are going to see dividend policy. Please try to watch the complete series to get the clarity about this topic. Now, let's get into the video. Before we see the numerical problem on dividend policy, let us try to understand the basic concept. The first one is meaning. Dividend policy determines the division of earnings between payments to shareholders and retained earnings okay the decision is whether to distribute the entire profit to shareholders or to retain some proportion okay that division decision is called dividend policy okay so under dividend policy we have two different theories the first one is uh, theories of relevance and the second one is theories of irrelevance so theories of relevance means dividend policy of a firm has a direct effect on the value of shares in the market because higher dividend will increase the value of shares whereas lower dividend decreases its value in the market. So, this is the concept of theories of relevance and it has two different models. The first one is Walter's model and second one Gordon's model. Okay, And the second one is the second theory is theories of irrelevance. So, theories of irrelevance means the dividend decision that is a dividend policy is irrelevant and it does not affect the market value of equity shares. So, this is the concept of theories of irrelevance. Under this we have one model that is MM model. So, MM model means Modigliani Miller hypothesis model. Okay, we are going to see the numerical problem for each and every model. So, first let us see Walter's model which comes under theories of relevance. See, under Walter's model, we have one formula to find out the market price per share. Okay, the formula is D plus R by K into E minus D divided by K. So, D refers to dividend per share, R refers to rate of return on investment, K refers to cost of capital and E refers to earnings per share. Again, D refers to dividend per share and K refers to cost of capital. Okay, So, these are the components which is required to find out market price per share according to Walter's model. Okay, So, based on certain assumptions only, you can derive the market price according to Walter's model. And the implications of Walter's models are the first one, the optimum payout ratio for a growth firm is nil. That is, uh, the payout should be 0 percentage. That is the optimum payout ratio according to Walter's model for growth firm. And the second one is, payout ratio for normal firm is irrelevant. Whatever may be the payout ratio, that is not going to affect, okay, for the normal firm. That is, uh, payout ratio for a normal firm is irrelevant. And the third implication is, Optimal payout ratio for a declining firm is 100%. So, 100% payout is applicable. That is the optimum decision for declining firm. So, these are the major implications under Walter's model. And the last one is higher the retention ratio, higher is the value of the firm and vice versa. Okay. So, these are the important implications which comes under Walter's model. Now, let us see what is growth firm normal firm and decline firm and how to determine the optimum payout for these three different firms. See, in order to determine growth firm, normal firm, declining firm, you should know what is the meaning of R and K. Then you have to compare. R refers to rate of return and K refers to cost of capital. Okay. If the R is greater than, that is the return on investment is greater than cost of capital then the firm is called growth firm. Okay. If the R is equal to K, that is return on investment and cost of equality both are same, then the company is called normal firm. If the R, that is rate of return is lesser than the cost of capital, then the firm is called declining firm. Okay. So, this is the way to identify growth firm, normal firm and declining firm. Now, let us see the optimum payout. For growth firm, the optimum payout is nil, that is 0% payout is the optimum payout. Okay. For the normal firm, the optimum payout is irrelevant. So, there is no optimum payout. Whatever may be the proportion of payout, that is not going to affect the 
firm value of shares. Okay, so the decision of optimum payout is irrelevant. The next one is declining firm. For declining firm, the optimum payout is 100%. The company has to declare the entire profit as dividend. That is 100% payout is the optimum payout for declining dividend. Okay, these are the important implications. You should know how to find out the optimum payout for three different types of firms. Okay, so in the next video, we are going to see a numerical problem to calculate market value per share and optimum payout for three different companies under Walter's model. You can find the links in the description box. Hope you like this video. Please hit the like, comment, subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you.